What's up everybody? Thank you guys for coming by the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at this NIV Biblical Theology Study Bible. This is put out by Zondervan. We're going to take a look at it. Before we get into that, if you're new here, my name is Steve. Thank you so much for coming by. While you're here, you're going to be encouraged and equipped to be the Christians you claim to be. You're going to do that by going through scripture and doctrine and reviewing solid tools and resources to help make your day-to-day -day better and more Christ-focused. If that sounds like something you're interested in, hit that subscribe button and let's get into it. So I'm excited to show you guys this video uh, because you know what? The gentlemen that have added to the commentary and the study materials inside this study Bible are second to none. Uh, just this name on the front, general editor is D.A. Carson, and uh, you've probably seen his name on lots and lots of exegetical material. That means at like commentaries, the Bible commentaries that you read and that pastors read to do their studying are written by a lot of these gentlemen. And we'll show you some of the, some of the other ones as we get into it. So again, this is the NIV Biblical Theology Study Bible. And it's put out by Zondervan. It retails for about $54.99. Um, but, but as usual, you can usually find it on sale. I will include uh, like an Amazon affiliate link down there and Christian books. So there's the ISBN for you. And if you want to take a look at that material, you can pause it and read through. We're going to go through some of that stuff, unfortunately and fortunately at the same time. Uh, there's so much in here that we can't take a look at all of it. Uh, but I do want to give you a good idea of what this Bible is all about. Let's take a quick uh, peek at the actual dimensions because it is on the bigger side. So you're looking at nine and a half inches by about six and a half inches by Two and a half inches, two and a quarter, give or take. So it, it is on the bigger side, uh, but that's good because it means it's cram-packed full of information that you're going to want to see and that you're going to want to know about. So this is the hardcover. For those of you who follow my channel, uh, when it comes to study Bibles like this, I prefer the hard the hardback for this exact reason because it sits on my shelf extremely nicely. This does come in a couple of other different uh, covers. It comes in bonded and imitation leather. It also comes uh, in the thumb indexed, which I've mentioned this before. Uh, strange enough as it may seem, I do not have a thumb indexed Bible of all the Bibles that exist in my house. So I need to pick one up to show you guys what that means. It just means that all the books of the Bible, Genesis, Sex, Leviticus, have little thumb indexes in there that you can make it easier, I suppose, to flip to where you're going. So it comes with a dust jacket and uh, the dust jacket can be removed. Of course, the dust jacket on all books can be removed. But the reason that I say that is because when you remove it, it's not just a, a plain piece of cardboard. It actually still looks pretty nice. And there's another shot of the ISBN. If you didn't get it before, you want to take a look. I'm going to say this for such a big, such a great resource. There are no ribbons. Now, that's not all that rare in hardback editions, uh, but I do have a few hardback editions that have ribbons, and I'd love to have a ribbon in especially a study Bible. So let's open it up and take a look. You get a presentation page, um, nice with a Bible verse here, Psalm 119. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. I will mention this as we're taking a look at the title page. And the cover, uh, the front information here, this again is the New International Version. The NIV is the best-selling, most well-circulated English translation pretty much throughout all of history. Um, because it's the most best-selling in <laughs> now, uh, you know, in our generation here where we just print books off like crazy. They don't have to be hand-copied like they did maybe say in 500 and this Bible used to be called, my understanding is it used to be called the NIV Zondervan Study Bible. Uh, it's been updated and changed a little bit, and, and the name has slightly changed. So here's all the legal information for you. This is 2K Denmark you see there, and there's always a note in the back. But I like to point out, I really enjoy and have come to love 2K Denmark's uh, font and like typesetting. Uh, they do a great job. It is always really super easy on the eyes, and I appreciate that. I like it. So in the very beginning, you're going to get a quick start guide. It's really nice when they include these on study Bibles, and most of them have it, because what it is, 
is just what it says, like a quick start guide to any new appliance that you buy. Here's how you get it started and get going with it. That's what this is. So um, it's going to tell you what's in there, what's in the Bible, what are the features, how you, just a little brief two sentences on like the cross-reference system. I'll lift it up there and you can read a couple of these. The cross-references, the study notes, the maps and the charts, and we'll take a look at some of those. You can see I have a couple of things uh, highlighted that we can flip open to. And then we get a table of contents. I mentioned this when I do study Bible reviews. Um, the table of contents tends to be slightly more important in a, in a study Bible than it does in a reference Bible because you're going to get all this other information, um, where the maps and charts are, uh, abbreviations, different. Uh, you even get, and we'll see this in just a minute, a list of the articles that are in there, and that stuff's important. But here are the 66 books of the canon. And the table of contents goes on to tell you, again, the maps. Here's where all the maps are in the Bible, because in a Bible like this, you're going to get maps all over the place. So you, you might want to be able to flip to uh, that sp the specific map that you're looking for. Or a chart. Okay, there's a lot of charts in here. You might want to just flip to them, and the table of contents is going to help you. Illustrations and models, and then articles. Most of the articles are in the back, so you'll become familiar with those. Um, because the, the articles that are at length, not just a paragraph or two, you'll see are uh, all in the back kind of stacked up together. All right, so we have abbrevi abbreviations and transliterations. This might come in handy if you see, especially in the footnotes or something, uh, an abbreviation you're not familiar with. And then the editorial team. So I told you I would point this out. Um, and when you're... But purchasing a Bible like this, you need to know who your editorial team is because these are the guys that are commenting on the text of Scripture. So you have D.A. Carson, Douglas Moo. He, he's one of my favorites. I love his commentaries and, and how he words things and says things. Um, they're just this whole this list of, of gentlemen that have commented and added to, uh, oh, to the biblical theology study part. Um, are people that you might want to know. And then if you like what they're having to say, this breaks it down by book for you, such as here. See, Douglas Moo did the book of James and the book of Second Peter. Um, uh, D.A. Carson did the book of John. So you have all these names here that you might want to become familiar with or at least know. And then we have this. I love timelines. Again, for those of you guys who know me, you know that I appreciate visual aids when it comes to reading the Bible to help me wrap my brain around what's really happening because I didn't live back then. And it certainly helps me to have these timelines. This one's laid out very nicely with very clear text and the color system that, man, this is helpful. I really appreciate stuff like this. Again, when it comes to the Old Testament, the Old Testament books of the Bible aren't exactly laid out Genesis through Malachi in that chronological order. It doesn't work like that. So you might want to know as you as you're reading different books where they where they come kind of in the scheme of things, so to speak. Uh, and that might help you understand. All right, so I want to point out a few things in the very beginning, and then we'll flip open to a couple of different pages. So you're going to see multiple sets of introductions. In a typical study Bible, you're going to get a book introduction, and we're going to see that. So you are going to get an introduction to the book of Genesis. But I really appreciate when they take the time to, to put in stuff like this, an introduction to the Old Testament. Okay, so you have a couple of pages. It's not much. Um, and it's a really basic survey of the entire Old Testament. That will help you when it comes to reading the Old Testament and knowing how to understand it. We interpret the parts in light of the whole, right? So if you're reading Genesis, but you don't know what type of book Genesis is or where it falls in the timeline, that might affect how you understand the text. So they're going to give you an introduction to the Old Testament. And then you get an introduction to the Pentateuch. Okay, so all throughout this particular Bible, you're going to get these different introductions. We have the Pentateuch, the five books of the law, right? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. But you also have the wisdom literature. You have uh, Pauline epistles. These are all different types of literature that we need to be reading in the correct manner to understand the context of what we're reading. Uh, and these little sections here that are included in this study Bible are going to help you do that. 
And then you get your introduction to Genesis. And each book has an introduction to Genesis as well as each section and each part. Okay, so let's just open up to one of the basic pages here and show you the basic information that you're getting. First of all, you'll notice that there's not a ton of room to write in the columns um, or in the margins, excuse me. You get about a half an inch there. But there is some room at the top if you're, if you're a copious note taker. But with this particular Bible, you might want to have a journal sitting next to you to write your thoughts. This is going to be single column paragraph format as opposed to double column, okay? Single column paragraph format, you're going to get your references in the what we would call the gutter or in the center margin. And all your study notes, your page for page study notes are down here in blue. So I'll lift this up and you can take a little bit quicker of a look at that, a little bit more focused at some of that information. You do get down here at the bottom. Um, these are the like footnotes. So the footnotes are different than the references in a different spot. And the commentary is nice and highlighted in this bluish color. Please correct me if I'm wrong. You all know that I'm colorblind. So I struggle with that. Okay, so let's flip open to a couple of these, uh, a couple of these things that just I highlighted for you because I wanted you to see what's available. So we talked about maps. There you go. And they're not all this big. Um, but as you're reading David's Wars of Expansion, you're reading through 2 Samuel, we're talking about David's wars and his reign is king. And here you go. It's going to give you a map with a lot of that information in there that will help you study. Broken down with colors, Israelites. Okay. Ooh. Okay, so then I mentioned this before and this will be a quick one, but see, here's, a, here's another introduction. So this is introduction to the wisdom and lyrical books. Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Just like the introduction to the Pentateuch, it's going to give you an idea of what type of literature that is and how best to read it. We have in all these, not only in the introductions, but wrapped up inside the, uh, inside the text you're going to get all these different little articles and drawings and illustrations and charts. So we have our introduction to the prophets. How do we read the prophets? And here is one of my favorite sections that is included in some study Bibles, but not all. And that's the intertestamental period. What happened between Malachi and Matthew? Like it, there's like 400 years there and, and not a whole lot of Bibles include what happened in that information um, or sorry, uh, the information about what happened during that period. So here you're going to get some timelines. Okay. You're going to get maps. And then you're going to get a whole bunch of information on what was going on during this intertestamental period. They're going to talk a little bit about the Apocrypha. Um, or the deuterocanonical texts, a bunch of extra writings that are included in Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox churches' Bibles that aren't included in the actual 66 books of the canon. Why do they have extra? But this is going to help you understand a little bit of that. And then the Dead Sea Scrolls. By the way, this is a little plug for archaeology. Um, I have a couple of archaeological study Bibles and stuff like the Dead Sea Scrolls and all the archaeological finds that happen currently. All they do is prove that the text of Scripture is correct because it is accurate and it is true. Um, and people give Christians a hard time for stuff like that. And then they, the archaeology digs up something that's, oh, look, here, the Pool of Bethesda was one of them. Um, but we have really nice full-color pictures and charts here to help you understand what you're reading. And then we have the articles. So as soon as you're, um, when the text of scripture is, you know, Revelation is over, basically, you're going to get your table of weight and measures. So here's the end of Revelation. And you're going to have articles. So here's a list of some of them. Let you guys focus in on that. Um, just so you can kind of get a, an idea of what type of articles are in here, if you wanted to see. But you have um, gentlemen like Tim Keller are writing articles in here. Again, of course, D.A. Carson. Um, these, This is not scripture. I want to be 
absolutely clear. The additions, the commentary, the charts, the maps, and these articles are not the word of God. They are not inerrant and infallible, but they can go a long way to help us understand the word of God. Uh, these were written by men and men alone, uh, but they are extremely helpful. These guys have done a whole lot of, put a whole lot of time and effort into studying the Bible and studying the context and studying the histories of uh of what's going on in here to help us understand it a little bit better. And so things like this, things like these articles in the back can be extremely valuable in my opinion and help you understand uh, what's in scripture. By the way, I neglected to mention this, so let's flip open to it just to give you a shot here. Um, this is, we, I, I'm told by Zondervan, and I don't have a reason to disagree that this is nine point font. So it's nine point font and it is black letter text. The words of Christ are in black letter. If that's something that helps you. And we'll flip open to the back. There's a, a really nice big um, concordance. Okay. It's actually a very substantial concordance. <laughs> this is all concordance. That's a lot of paper. And then we have the maps. These maps are on Bible paper, which is amazing. Once you see maps on Bible paper, I feel like you never want it any other way. But alas, they don't all come that way. Uh, but these are really nice maps. And the color scheme is very pretty, especially if you, like me, are a visual learner and that helps you out. So, that's it. This I love this Bible. I'm really excited about it. I'm excited to put it into use in my own daily life. I will drop links uh, for purchase down in the description. If you have any questions, as always, please leave them in the comments. Let me know what if there's something that I didn't cover that you need more information on. And I want to pass the question off to you. What is your favorite study Bible and how do you use it on a daily basis? Hey, thank you guys for watching today. I hope I've earned the privilege of your time. If you found value in this video and think that others may find value in it too, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up. Maybe even share it with a friend who's looking for this same type of information. Here's a couple of other videos that uh, you might be interested in. I wanna say a big thank you to Zondervan for sending me this Bible so I can show it to you and review solid resources out there to help make your day-to-day -day better and more Christ-focused. Be blessed and don't forget, be the Christians you claim to be.